Welcome back to Self Love Ignited. Today is our 100th episode. Oh my goodness, I cannot believe that we are here 100 episodes. And today we are talking about self trust, trusting yourself, trusting the universe. Mm -hmm. A little bit different than we've done before, but it is a great episode. I want to share a couple of personal stories with you. Plus, I give you some really tangible, simple tools that you can implement today to begin to lean in so that you can surrender. It's not scary. I promise. See you on the inside. My name is Katie Allen, and this is Self Love Ignited. Let's get to it. Welcome back to Self Love Ignited. Today is our 100th episode, and I can't even tell you how amazing that is for me. When I started this podcast back in June of 2020, if you had told me that, you know, sometime in the middle of 2022, we'd be reaching 100 episodes, I don't think I would have believed you. I would have just gone, ah, it's not going to keep going. Nobody's going to listen. It's not going to go for that long. Yet here we are. And, you know, since the beginning, since I started this, this is this, this, this podcast is my pandemic baby. I like to say June of 2020. So we were sort of near the beginning of all of the chaos in the world. Um, and I started it and here we are. And you know what? It is, it is one of my favorite parts of my business always has been, I have met some incredible people. I've done some amazing interviews. I have learned so much about podcasting, but also about coaching and personal development and self-love, right? Like we are all on this journey. So if this is your first episode ever, welcome to episode 100 or episode one for you. If you have been with us since the beginning, thank you so much for being here, for listening. And if you have joined us somewhere along the way, welcome. This space is yours and I could not be happier to have you here with me. This journey is full of lots of ups and downs, much like life. Um, but you know what? I wouldn't change it. It is awesome. It is awesome. Today, we are talking about trusting yourself and surrendering. And this is very uh, relevant to what's happening right now in the world. But it's also actually relevant to the very beginning of this podcast. The, the, the start, how it all began. Um, this is something that I've been talking about over in my Facebook group recently, the Heart Space community. Um, I've been going live in there. I went live in there a couple of times talking about this exact subject. And it was something that a lot of people really appreciated. A lot of people had a lot of thoughts on. Uh, we had some questions about it. And I wanted to bring it to to you, right? I wanted to bring it outside the group because um, I know that this is something that is really relevant to a lot of people. So I suppose I really want to start by talking about self-trust, right? Self-trust and surrender. What do I, what do I mean when I'm talking about that? Um, and this is something that is obviously multifaceted, right? It's, it, this, it, this is not black or white. It's not yes or no. But um, when I'm talking about self-trust, it's like trusting that you can handle whatever comes your way. Trusting that you have the resources, the capability, the tools, um, to deal with whatever life throws at you. And trusting yourself also means trusting the universe or trusting in something greater. So if you don't believe in something greater, then just, just think self-trust, right? Just think about trusting in yourself. If you think, if you do believe in something greater, whether that be uh, the universe, spirit, God, whatever, whatever feels true to you, um, then when I'm talking about self-trust, I'm talking about yourself and that which is greater. Because I firmly believe we are one and the same. We are spirit. We are made of the same elements as the universe, right? We are the universe. We are one. We all have this amazing ability as well to connect. We all have this intuition, this gut feeling, this wisdom that lives within us. Um, so when you're trusting yourself, you're trusting the intuition, you're trusting the universe, you're trusting all of it, right? And this is relevant because, you know what, recently, this has been something that I personally have been leaning into a lot. It's also something that I've been seeing with some of my clients quite a bit. So I, I just, I feel like this is happening a lot in 
the world. Um, for myself, this has been, I've talked about this many times on the podcast um, in lots of different places. This last year has been a lot for me. Um, I'm not going to go into all the details, but essentially, you know, uh, relationship ended, lost my home, ended up on the other side of the world. My dog ended up in foster care. There, there was just a lot of, a lot of things that happened. And though I was recovering emotionally and sort of dealing with that, it also put me in a place where I had to make a lot of decisions. Specifically, did I want to stay in Canada? Did I want to come back to Australia? I'm in Australia right now. So we know, we know how that ended. Um, but, you know, I was in that place where I was like, where do I want to be? Where do I want to be? And of course, I had things pulling me. My family is in Canada. Friends are in Australia. Most of my network is in Australia. My dog, uh, who is like my, my fur child, is in Australia, right? So I was having these two poles. And what do I do? And what do I do? And for months, I was in this place of uh, anxiety and overwhelm and just not knowing what to do about the whole thing, not knowing where to go, not knowing how to navigate this. Um, and it was... It would have been a month or two ago, probably about a month ago, that I got to a place where I just went, you know what, this overthinking thing, this isn't working anymore. It, it's never really worked. It has just caused a lot of anxiety, a lot of self-doubt, a lot of chaos internally and externally. And, you know, I do a lot of reading and a lot of personal development. Of course, when you're in this space, it is sort of a requirement that we, as, as, as a coach, I'm always working on myself so that I can help you better. And one day I was, I was working with one of my own coaches and I got to the point where I just went, you know what? I surrender. I'm going to stop fighting. I'm going to start taking the signs that the universe is giving me. I'm just going to start noticing. I'm going to start picking up the breadcrumbs and following the trail instead of looking up in the sky and running around with my hands up in the air going, ah, I don't know what to do because it's not up to me. And this is not something that came easily. This is something that I had to do. It, it took me a long time to get here, but I've gotten to the point where I have surrendered and I'm saying, universe, where do you want me? Where do you want me? And it has led me, it led me first to the UK, from Canada to the UK, and then it led me to Australia, and it is leading me, I mean, we don't know, I don't know, it's a mystery, but I trust that it is leading me back to Archie, my dog, I trust that it is leading me to a new home, I trust that it is leading me exactly where I need to be, and the, a lot of this is intuition, right? It's listening to that. It's trusting what comes up inside. Um, and another, you know, I said that this was relevant to the start of this podcast as well. We are here at episode 100. I had an intuitive nudge to start this podcast. Uh, when I started this, I haven't told many people this, but when I started this podcast, June of 2020, I had never been on a podcast. I had never been interviewed by anybody else. I liked podcasts. I listened to them. And I had been sort of for a while in my head thinking, oh, I would like to start a podcast. I think that that would be, I, I think that would be kind of a cool thing to do. I think that would be like a really fun addition to, you know, everything else that I had, all the social media stuff and the Facebook and the Instagram and all that. I thought, oh, a podcast would be really fun. And one day I just went, I'm going to start a podcast. I'm going to do it. And the next day I released episode one. And I've had people listen to this podcast to episode one and go, wow, it must have taken you like a lot of takes or like you must have edited that really well so that it all flowed or you, you might, you were, you reading off a script or something because there was, everything was just so easy. And the answer is no. I sat down that very first day and just talked. I believe it was a couple of years ago, but I believe I had a post-it in front of me with a few points on it. And I just talked. And from that day on, I kind of went, this is going to be something. But it was that intuitive nudge that I listened to. And then I trusted that I could learn as I went. And I have. At the beginning, yeah, it was a bit rough. Just like everything, right? We have to walk before we can run. The beginning of something, quite often, there is a learning curve. And I did not, 
um, seek out any help with this, right? I didn't like take a course. I didn't, I didn't buy any programs to teach me how to podcast. I learned through practice. I researched, I figured out how to edit. I figured out how to do all of the things. I figured out how to do audio, how to do video, but it was all through trusting that I could learn, trusting that the right people would come along, the right uh, guests would show up, the exact people that my audience that you needed to hear from, that you wanted to hear from. And I absolutely am so grateful and it could not have gone any better. And I can't wait until episode 200. Um, I just, I think that there's been so much goodness already in the last couple of years and there's going to be so much more. There, there just is, I know it. Um, so this, this idea of surrendering, I wanna get back to this idea of surrendering where I am now, surrendering to the universe letting it go, giving up control, so much anxiety that a lot of people have, so much overwhelm, so much questioning is because we are gripping, we are holding on, we are trying to control everything. And to be fair, our society is a pretty head-based one. There are some cultures around the, the world that are much more intuitive based, right? That's much more about like, how do you feel? What does your body tell you? It's not unusual to talk about that. Western culture, so I am Canadian, I live in Australia, right? So sort of westernized um, cultures, we are head-based. What do you think, right? It's like, the th what do you think? We're talking about the logic, we're talking about the action steps. Um, that is normal. So this idea of surrendering and not having any action steps, not having any control, not, not knowing what is coming is a really, can be a really, really scary one, but it is also so freeing. So if you have a lot of anxiety around things, if you feel like you want to surrender, if you have read this in books, if you've read it in books or heard about it on other podcasts or whatever it happens to be, if you've heard of people being like, just surrender, just trust the universe, just trust yourself. And you're like, how the heck do I do that? I'm going to give you a few starting points because you know what, for the last ooh, three to five years, I have been that person. And in little bits and pieces, such as me starting the podcast, in little bits and pieces, I have done it. But overall, I have really been that person who's just been like, how do I surrender? That feels so scary. That feels like I'm going to be losing out. It feels like I'm just going to lose control of everything. It feels like nothing is going to happen or my life is going to stagnate or I'm going to end up in this awful, awful place. Um, so how do you do it? How do you do it? First of all, what I want to say is if you don't want to do it, if you have no desire to surrender, if you like being in control, if you are really happy with this, you don't have to do this, right? This is, this is not like a requirement. This is something that I personally have been called to do and have been seeking for a very long time. Um, so if you are in the same place, then I think that this is going to help you. So how are we going to do it? There's a few, there's a few steps that I would really encourage you to take. Number one, listen to other people who have done this, right? There are so many great resources out there, obviously this podcast episode, but there are so many books. Um, you know, like Gabby Bernstein is a great resource. She has written quite a few books. She has a really awesome podcast. I listen to her. I'm currently reading one of her books right now. Um, but there are just, there's so many people out there in the world who talk about this. So don't hesitate to educate yourself, right? Educating yourself is never a bad thing, I don't think. Um, I would say step number one is go inside. If we are leaning into trusting, if you're leaning into trusting yourself, you've got to connect to yourself. You've got to go inside. For me, that looks like meditation. And if you do not have a meditation practice, I would highly recommend that you start. You start today. You don't need anything fancy to do it. And if you think I could never meditate, Meditation isn't just sitting still in lotus position, chanting Om on a cushion, though that is quite wonderful, I have to say. Um, but meditation can also be walking meditation, right? Moving meditation. 
um, there you can do chanting. You can do things like a candle meditation where you actually look at a flame. Um, you can do visualizations, right? So there's lots of different types of meditations. So if you have just written meditation off completely, I would really encourage you to maybe revisit that a little bit. If you do not have a meditation practice, start one. Meditation is one of the best tools to connect with yourself, to go inside, to quiet the chatter, to quiet the outer world. Because when you are looking to listen to what's inside, when you are looking to lean into yourself, lean into self-trust, you've got to first connect with yourself but you've also got to create space for it. It's like a sacred pause. That's how I like to view my meditation practice. It is a sacred pause. And that pause can be filled with nothing but space. That pause can be filled with music. That pause can be filled with, like I said, a visualization, but it is a pause that is going to go so far on this journey. Secondly, I would really encourage you to reflect on whatever comes up during the pause. So that looks like uh, having a regular journaling practice. Again, I was really resistant to journaling for a very long time. I had this idea in my head that I was a bad journaler. And I remember saying this to a coach years ago. I just said, I'm just really bad at journaling. I just can't do it. She was like, well, what do you mean you're bad at journaling? I said, well, you're supposed to have a journal practice where you know you do it every single day and I can't stick to it every single day. And she said, where did that rule come from? Who says that you have to journal every day? Who says that you're a bad journaler? If every once in a while you pick up a journal and it is useful and is a, it is a powerful tool for you, then you're a journaler, then do it. And I remember just thinking like, oh, it's not all or nothing. It's not every day or never, right? It is a tool that is at your disposal. Um, but I would really encourage you to have some sort of reflection practice and a journaling practice is a wonderful way to do that. Again, your journaling practice can be journaling on what came up in your meditation. It can be asking a question and just free writing and seeing what comes up. It can be using journaling prompts. Um, there's so many different ways to do it. And if you are not much of a writer, you can also do video journaling. I've done that quite a bit as well, where you just get out your phone pop on the, the video and just record yourself and just talk to your phone. And it's just journaling just out loud, right? I know for myself, because I am, um, I like to speak. I'm an auditory person. I like to speak and listen. Obviously it's a good reason I have a podcast. Uh, I know that for, for myself, video journaling can be really, really powerful as well. So some sort of pause practice such as meditation, some sort of reflection practice, such as journaling. And then I want you to start creating an evidence list. When we are starting something new, quite often, it's really scary. And we, it's really easy to tell the story that like, this is never going to work. I don't know what I'm doing. This is crazy. Begin an evidence list of all of the times where you have trusted yourself. You have trusted the universe. You have trusted spirit. You have trusted that things are going to work out and they have all the times you've been supported. This can be big or small, right? But all those times that you just went, oh, what a lucky coincidence. Was it a coincidence? All those times that you met the right person at the right time, or you were at the right place at the right time. All of those times that things have just worked out in your favor, those times that you followed a hunch, you didn't really know what you were doing, but you did it. And it turned out those times where you just had that little ping in your brain, something told you go here, do this, don't go here, right? Step away from this person and it worked out for you. And if you don't think that this has happened to you, do some reflecting on it. I don't think I've ever met anybody who ha doesn't have some sort of evidence for this, right? And it doesn't mean that everything is always perfect, but what we are trying to do is just find the evidence, create that evidence list that you are supported, that you are getting these signs from the universe you are getting these pings you your intuition is working and it is there it has always been there and when we see that it has always been there and when we can start to accept that it has always been there then leaning in and trusting it more and more and more isn't as scary right it's not an unknown we realize that we've been doing it all along so begin a list start collecting evidence that this has been happening all along 
and then begin to lean in in small ways. Now, when we are looking to surrender, when we are looking to trust the guidance of the universe, when we are looking to trust ourselves, I don't want you to start with massive things. We are not starting with what country should I live in? No, we are not starting with what city should I live in? We are not starting with, should I quit my high paying job that I've been working at for the last 10 years? That's not where we're starting. Start with small things. Start with things that have less, uh, I don't want to say less importance, but just that hold less value or that hold less weight for you and just begin to play. And a really great way to do this is to ask for a sign, is to ask for a sign. And uh, so again, coming back to my story where I ended up back in Australia, one sign that I asked for, and this was the second to last thing that made me decide to come back here was one night I was doing some reflecting, doing some journaling. And I basically was like writing a letter to the universe. I just said, universe, if I am meant to go back to Australia, if I am meant to go back to Archie, if that is my path, if that is, if that is where I am meant to be, I want you to send me a red parrot. Now, Red Parrot wasn't a logical thing. This wasn't like something that I thought about. I was just writing and it just, it came out, right? So this was, this was like an intuitive thing. This was not logical. And keep in mind, I was in London, right? I'm in the UK. There's not parrots flying around there. This wasn't like a thing that I had seen. I can't even tell you the last time I saw a red parrot, but I just said, send me a red parrot. And I finished journaling and I put that down. And then that later that evening, I was lying in bed on my phone and I was uh, playing a game, one of those puzzle, like where you do puzzles on your phone. And I was lying there uh, scrolling down to find one to do. And I scrolled and there was a puzzle with a red parrot just sitting there in the middle of the screen. I'm getting goosebumps talking about this, but there is a puzzle with a red parrot. And I just went, got it. I see you. I see you. Thank you. Thank you for sending me the sign. Thank you for confirming. And you have to remember, I hadn't like typed this in to an electronic device where the algorithm could have picked it up. I hadn't said this out loud. I had thought it and I had scribbled it in a notebook and put it down. And then, you know, not too long later, this thing just pops up. That is a pretty damn clear sign. (laughs) That is a pretty clear sign for me. I don't believe in coincidences. I think that everything happens for a reason and I think that everything is connected. So begin to ask for signs about anything, about small things and work your way up and begin to stretch your comfort zone. Because if right now your comfort zone is very small, if you're like, I'm not trusting anything, I'm not trusting the universe, I'm not following signs, I'm not trusting my intuition, I don't trust that I could deal with whatever comes up, I'm just absolutely none, your your comfort zone is very small. We are not going to make it huge. If you try to stretch it too far, it's going to snap. I always like to think of your comfort zone like an elastic band. If you stretch it a little, then it contracts. Stretch it a little, and then it contracts. But if you stretch it too much, it snaps. We don't want to do that, right? We want to be gentle. Um, And during, when you are doing this, when you are asking for signs, when you are leaning in, when you are trusting yourself, you are reflecting, you are going in. This is a practice. None of these are like a one and done thing. This is a practice, right? You don't meditate once and then you are a Zen monk sitting on top of a mountain. You meditate and you meditate and you go in and then you reflect and then you meditate and then you ask for signs and then you follow your intuition and you notice those little things and then you reflect on them and then you meditate. And it is a process. It is a journey. It is a beautiful one. It is a peaceful one. It can be a very exciting one, but it is a practice. All of this is a practice. And when you begin to trust yourself, when you begin to trust the universe, when you trust that you are sent the right people, when you trust that you are sent signs, it is such a weight off your shoulders. It is such a relief. And it allows you, it gives you the space and the freedom to expand. And no longer, you're not in your head all the time, right? It's getting out of your head, getting into your body, getting into the world, getting into the world. 
And if any of this has resonated with you, um, if any of this has resonated with you, I would love to hear from you. If you would like to join our free Facebook group, Heart Space Community, there will be a link uh, in the show notes below this. I would love to have you there. This is, like I said, I did a couple of lives in the group about this and there was just a lot of interaction. A lot of people were asking questions and, um, you know, sending me messages about it. So uh, I wanted to, I wanted to share this message in a broader space, but you know, that is the kind of thing that we do in the group regularly. We also do Oracle card readings. Oracle cards are also a wonderful tool when you are learning, when you are beginning to look for signs. Uh, we do those free readings in the group uh, every week as well. So if you would like to join us, please do so. I would love to see you there. If you are interested in getting support on your journey, if you are learning to lean in, if you are learning to trust yourself, if you feel like you are at the beginning and you have a lot of resistance, if you are, you know, in a space where you want to learn to love yourself and accept yourself and be really kind to yourself and, you know, it's all connected, everything is all connected and you would like some assistance in doing so, I would love to chat with you. Please click on through. Um, I do single sessions and I also do a free call if you're interested in learning about a larger package, a larger one-on-one -on -one coaching package, all of the links for those are going to be uh, below. So it's nice and simple for you to find. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for joining me. This has been a wonderful 100th episode. It is my pleasure to be here with you. I love doing this. I love hearing from you. Knowing that this work in some way is helping you find self-love, self-acceptance, self-trust is just absolutely incredible. And it makes my heart full. And I hope that you can feel that because I do my best to share that with you on every single episode. We are going to leave it there. If you would like to get in touch, please do so. If you'd like to join our group and come along for some live card readings, I would love to have you have a beautiful week. Take care of yourself. Lots of love. I will see you next time.